Hey guys, Kane here. I've got another 1v1 for you. It's Ivan D and Anarchid this time on uh, Deadlands. Is that the name of the map? I don't really remember. Something like that. I guess I better double check here real quick. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Yeah, Deadlands. Okay. Sorry about that. So Anarchid in the northeast here with this green cloak about factory. Construct your first opening. Uh, more economic rather than uh, aggressive here with the glaives. Down the southwest, we're going to see Ivan D with the light vehicle factory. A few scouts and then a constructor of his own. Uh, opting for the Strike Commander chassis, which is nice to see. A um, Recon chassis as well from Anarchid. It's uh, interesting to see that the Support Commander chassis has fallen out of favor. I've seen a lot more Battle Commanders, Recon Commanders, and Strike Commanders, which are still pretty uncommon, but um, you are seeing them more frequently than I have. Uh, for a while there, I mean, Support Commander was basically the only choice. I guess people have been learning to be more aggressive with their Commanders rather than keeping them at home. But uh, either way, it looks like the Scouts are heading out now. These darts, the Start's going to meet up with the Glaive and... So both players have the factory scout, and after that the dart just sort of hangs out, gonna get taken out by this glaive pretty handily here. And uh, that happens, no sweat here, another dart just hanging out in the center of the map. Two darts, one on each corner here from Ivan D. That's a nice little strategy, basically trying to get some intel, whether Anarchy goes to expand there or not. And of course, if he tries to take it expand out to that corner, um, the constructor's gonna have a pretty bad time because, well, there's nothing here to defend it, and a single dart can definitely take out a constructor. If he's too far out of position, defender coming up, to uh, try and head off any glaive approaches from the north here. Definitely on the radar, I'm sure. And then uh, heading out with the commander, it looks like. Morphing on low priority, always a good decision. Looks like a fairly heavy morph. Uh, yeah, 250 metals, so he's probably got a module on there of some sort. Glaive again coming out from Anarchid, and a uh, pretty fortified position here from Anarchid as well. Looks like an LLT and then a defender, rather than just the uh, single LLT that most players opt for. A few salvos going off here. This is actually a slasher. Going to be chasing away this glaive back to the north. And, uh, well, hopefully he doesn't pick up Ivan D's uh, scout over here, but doesn't seem to be the case. This constructor pretty far forward, not a lot to defend it. I mean, the slasher, I suppose, but he can't really get up onto these hills, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like they can just barely make it up these hills. I actually didn't know that. I've never seen light vehicles on this map before, except for that time the Anarchy cheesed me. Um, so I wasn't ever sure if you could go up and down these levels with vehicles, but it looks like you can, so that's, that's nice to know. All right, a little bit of an engagement down here to the southeast, and we saw the uh, constructor did get caught off guard, but the glaive did get there in time to take out the dart before he could finish him off. 14% health, but that's pretty much how I expected it to play out. If you have a lot of mobile mobile units up here towards the front, then you're going to be able to defend your constructors against a uh, planted scout like that. Looks like some forward radar coming up for Ivan D, and then some slashes to form a perimeter. It's a really nice expansion strategy from Ivan D. It's uh, fairly... Oops, let me close that. It's uh, fairly conservative, you know, he's being uh, definitely a bit careful here by pushing with the slashes and then his constructor behind it. Oh boy, this is, uh, this is pretty unfortunate. I don't know if this isn't on radar or what's going on, but this group of glaives is definitely poised to do some damage. Oh boy, it's going to be running right here towards the uh, bottleneck, towards the expansion. Might just barely get there in time to take out the LLT and then uh, probably onto the slasher next and then it'll catch this constructor out of position as well. Really nice execution there. You notice how um, just a few of the glaives split off for the slasher and the rest were dealing damage on that constructor. Taking out the radar tower and then running right away. Not even messing with the comm dive because you can deal a lot more damage uh, with, with the glaives. You know, just running around the base, taking out the eco as well as you can. I mean, this is pretty damaging. He's lost a couple of glaives here in this raid, but uh, Ivan Diaz has lost a slasher, a constructor, a couple of mexes. So definitely worth it, I think. Probably time for this glaive to try and go home, uh, wait for some buddies, and then regroup. Uh, I should mention, there's been a scythe creeping around the map the entire time for Anarchid. Um, mostly just looking to scout, it seems. I don't believe he's actually had an engagement. Uh, just pure slasher so far from Ivan D, which is in interesting to see. It looks like he's going for a bit of a strong com push. Not cheese necessarily. He is, you know, making some attempts to uh, advance economically, but these are pretty far forward slashers. And you can see here a couple of scythes coming in now. Just getting into position, they should be able to take out both of these slashers without any issue. I mean, these two sides should be able to take it out. I think it's maybe four swings, so two swings from each should do it. Something like that. I guess I can take a look real quick. Uh, let's see here. It looks like, well, uh, 200 damage from the weapon. Oh, wow. It's actually quite a bit more than I expected. 820 health on these slashers. So, no. Right around there. Yeah, just about four swipes from each should be enough to do it. And, uh, oh, no. That's 560 HP. I must have misread. So, three swipes. Yeah. I mean, pretty quickly going to take out the slashers, these sides here. And it looks like another slasher just about to suicide right into it. LT now coming up from Ivan D to help defend against the sides if they come in again. Um, this defender saving that constructor. Man, these are some lucky constructors. 2 HP for this, or 2% HP for this one. And a uh, slasher driving right up here to the defender. 
Probably should stop and take a couple of shots at it. <laughs> Eventually, I would expect. Here, the side is coming in to take out the uh, slashers. Wow, some nice manual fire. Oh, no, actually, the uh, Rocco's aggro the slashers, and that exposed the side. Side's coming in now. It looks like they're trying to go for the calm dive. Uh, gotta take the LT first for sure. The slashers are gonna be dealing damage as well. Doesn't look like these sides are gonna finish off the commander, but they should push him back pretty hard. Uh, I mean, I, I would definitely be a bit nervous having a commander this far forward at 400 health right outside of my en enemy's base. Uh, nice expansion here to the southeast from Anarchy. Looks like he fortified it before. No. Looks like he uh, just built some light defenses, then the metal extractors, and then fortified it afterwards. Always a nice call. Gonna be hard to dislodge him from there as well. Same time, these slashes pushing right into the heart of Anarchy. It's basically gonna be a big problem. Uh, potentially, I mean, unless he builds some more scythes, I suppose. But it uh, doesn't look like that's... I don't know, yeah. Another scythe coming up. They're going to pick off the LLT. Uh, boy, this is a really difficult position for Anarchid. He might actually lose his base here. Oh, man, and I missed it. Scythe came in here, finished off the commander while these uh, slashers were pushing forward. So, I mean, to me, it's looking pretty even. I guess Anarchid does have a huge economic advantage over Ivan D. Over Ivan D, who has had, uh, well, most of his metal extractors raided out from the looks of things. Man, these sizes, I mean, you think that they're fragile because, uh, well, because they're a cloaked unit, and most cloaked units are pretty fragile. They actually have more HP than the Slashers, so, um, pretty tanky as far as that goes. Uh, really the perfect unit for taking out the Slashers, which is nice to see. Another one coming in here, probably going to finish the job, and, I mean, with this, the defense is completed. Ivan D is left essentially without a military. His commander's gone down, and here's Anarchid establishing control of the reclaim. Just needs to take out the uh, LLT. And, uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's unfortunate, but that's the breaks. A little bit of a rough spot. Uh, I mean, Ivan D had set up a couple of LTs in the hopes of defending the slashers, so it's probably really frustrating to have the sides come in, take out the slashers, and then his commander afterwards. But uh, things get a little tricky when the units are all clumped up like that, and it's hard to rely on your defenses. It's, I mean, a little bit easier to rely on them if they're spread out or if you have an overwhelming force. I mean, ultimately, these sides were just the perfect call, and it was executed correctly, so... Uh, there you go. Anarchy profited pretty heavily from making the right th decision there. Another Glaive coming in, trying to raid out whatever's left of this eco, but, I mean, honestly, there's not much, uh, yeah, not much to do for Ivan D here. I mean, uh, this game is pretty much settled for Anarchy. Anarchy's, you know, nice guy. Giving Ivan D some tips here, uh, spe specifically, when he had his slashers out here, um, the collision volumes, I guess, were blocking the LOTs from firing at the sides, which uh, at the sides don't really have to worry about anyway, because they are a uh, melee unit. I might have misunderstood that if someone knows exactly what he's talking about, something about collision volume blocking the uh, LOTs from firing, but man, Ivan he's pretty upset about this. I mean, I would be too. That sucks, you know, because he saw the size, he defended against it, he knew it was coming, and his well-laid trap just didn't pan out. Uh, and that's just you're okay, man. It's just, you know, it's emergent. It's a little squishy and fuzzy at times. So it's hard to tell what exactly is going to work and what isn't, which is all part of the fun and uh, sometimes part of the frustration. But, uh, I mean, I, there's not really much more to say about this game. It looks like Ivan D, why is he even building caretakers? He has nowhere near uh, the need for this. Actually just needs some energy. Uh, he might be thinking that he's accessing, he's actually just Esau. Oh, here he, here he is reclaiming this caretaker now, actually. Trying to get some more... Uh, Middle going on, and then a gunship switch from Anarchy should pretty much seal the deal. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed through this um, real quick. A little bit of raiding going on to the northwest, and uh, sides coming to line up here. Uh, I mean, ultimately, Ivan D just gets shut down, and looks like dismantles his brawler coming in. Definitely ends the game. There we go. Second one to follow it up. Takes out the uh, factory, and Ivan D uh, just throws in the towel at that point. Kind of rough. I mean, that engagement definitely didn't go the way that he planned, but. Uh, one thing I took away from that was just how effective Scythes can be against against Slashers. That was amazing. You know, how many Slashers were there? There was four Slashers, the LT, and the Commander, all there to defend. I think it was two Scythes did most of the damage, and then two more came in to finish it off. That's a pretty good trade. Plus all of the reclaim that was left in Iron Kid's base. I'm not really sure why Ivan D pushed so far forward with the Slashers. I mean, to me, it makes sense to do that right after the game starts, to try and basically contain your opponent or to do that very slowly and gradually. You start with like an expanding perimeter basically from your base out here. I'm using hand motions like you guys can see, but basically um, form like an expanding perimeter like this with the slashers and then slowly expand behind that because the slashers are really good at establishing a perimeter. Of course, they're always going to be vulnerable to the sides, which I mean, just a great call. And, uh, that's really my main takeaway here is that next time I get uh, basically uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? Stumped by a bunch of slashers. Uh, I'm going to try and whip out some sides if I have the uh, factory on, on the map. But anyway, good game. I enjoyed it. Hope you guys did as well. As always, leave me a comment if I screwed anything up in the uh, comments down below. And I'll catch you next time.